Welcome back. I'm doing a video today on rendering beeswax. Started beekeeping about 10 years ago, and from the little bit of honey harvest in the beginning, I kind of just discarded all my, my wax cappings when I extracted honey. As time went on, I started realizing this is uh, probably a valuable resource that I can kind of put back into the business. You can sell that wax, you can get into candle making. So about years, I don't know, maybe six, five, six, seven in that area, I started saving my wax cappings and I wasn't doing anything with it. I was kind of intimidated by the whole rendering wax process. And I just, it was one of those things that always got put on the back burner. So then I got all these buckets of wax cappings and last year I rendered one down, uh, you know, the first step and uh, it was not difficult at all. I, I wish I had started doing it sooner. So today's video is going to be how to render that wax or how I render wax. I'm not, I'm new at it. So there's definitely other techniques out there. So we're going to get started and the things you're going to need is a big stock pot, a heat source, your wax cappings and a stick, five gallon bucket, and something to strain, a uh, very fine cheesecloth. A t-shirt works really well. I started using that. And the more you refine it down, the more times you do it, the more pure your wax is going to be, the lighter it will get. But then you sacrifice that, that sweet goodness that, that, that is in the, uh, the wax. Um, I'm going to get started. I'll set up the camera. I'll take you step by, you know, step by step. And I'll try to edit out as much as I can to make it a pretty quick, basically separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so the tools and supplies that you're going to need for rendering the wax, the wax cappings, obviously. You need a big stock pot and a heat source to heat up the water in the stock pot, because that's how you render the wax. You're going to melt it into water. Uh, a little stir stick is kind of handy. A little shovel just to scoop out your wax cappings. Clothes pins. An empty bucket that I think that if you're going to render wax in your empty bucket or buckets, you are going to be sacrificing that bucket to wax rendering. I don't think you'll be able to clean that out back to a food grade quality. So I haven't even tried and I'm not going to. I'm just going to save that for wax rendering. You're also going to need some sort of filtration supply. And I started using a t-shirt. Uh, you could use cheesecloth. You could use a real fine colander if you could find one with fine enough of a mesh. When I first started doing this, I used my honey filter and it ruined it. So I won't be using those anymore. And then I switched to cheesecloth and it, it's all right. The cheesecloth is okay, but I just, you always have old t-shirts around. So, you know, and the clothes pins are for holding your filter on top of the bucket. So I'll set the camera up and we'll go through the procedure. Okay, so what we do is I have my water all set up in here. It doesn't have to boil. In fact, I don't think it should boil because wax can get scorched. I'm not, I know like uh, in a saucepan with just the wax, um, you don't want it to go over like 180 degrees. I'm not sure if the water offers forgiveness or not. So I just, I don't bring it up to a boil, uh, a simmer at best. Uh, I have a feeling the water does kind of add some forgiveness. So you're just going to add your wax cappings. I haven't figured out a ratio of um, water to wax in this bucket. Uh, I fill this stock pot up about a third of the way. Because remember, you have to dump it. So, and it gets a little heavy and laborious, especially a uh, little heavy. And especially with it being really hot. So it can become uh, a bit of a task. So third of the uh, water. And then I put about... I've been doing about half of a five gallon bucket of cappings. I don't know what 
would be too much wax to water. I haven't experimented enough with that. I would say equal parts wax to water is a real safe bet. I have gotten away with doing half the bucket and I haven't pushed the envelope beyond that. So we got our wax in there. And what's gonna happen is that wax is all gonna melt. And it's, it's kind of cool what happens. The whole way this works is the wax is the lightest thing. When it melts, it's gonna all float. The water stays below and all the slum gum which slum gum is all the undesirable stuff that comes out of the wax, any larva, any bee parts, you know, any dirt, anything that you, you just wouldn't want in your wax. This is what we're filtering out. That is called slum gum. So the slum gum kind of gets layered under the wax because when we get done melting all this wax down, we're going to pour it into our straining device which is right there. It's just a t-shirt with some clothes pins holding it down. And the water of wax will all pass through the t-shirt and sit in the five gallon bucket. And then you just let that wax cool and harden. It takes some time. You know, don't sit there and watch it. It'll take even longer. Uh, but then when that wax completely cools, there's going to be basically a disc of wax floating on top of water and then slum gum in that order that disc of wax when you pull it out is going to be a little dirty on the bottom still um because it was sitting on that slum gum so there's there's more steps to rendering the wax down and basically you just repeat the process and the more times you repeat it the more pure the wax is going to be depending on what you're using that wax for is probably how many times you're going to render it down i've made candles and i've rendered it down two times and I found that the candles were clean, but there was still in my wax pot that I was melting it in, uh, there was still some undesirables floating around on the top. So I think for candle making, I'm gonna do a minimum of three renderings. Some people are only using the wax to coat their frames and I, you could probably get away with you know, the second rendering. I would always do at least two just to get all that, the, the initial stuff. And when you do this, you'll see, and I'll show you uh, at, you know, when I get to that step after this all cures, what it looks like on the bottom of the wax disc and how really filthy it is. And it still needs more, you know, another cycle. So that's, uh, it for this step. And when I'm ready to pour and filter it through, I will turn the camera back on and we'll show you that. All right. So this is what it looks like. All that wax melted, that solid material you see on top, that's the slum gum. And there's all wax mixing. That's what we're actually filtering out. So that is going to stay on top of the t-shirt or whatever filter medium you're using. The water and wax will pass through. And any little bits of fine slum gum is going to pass through as well. And that's why you have to do it several times. So I'm going to take my pot, uh, try to use pot holders. Don't, you know, anything I do that's procedural, it looks, you know, I'm, I'm not the best with uh, safety. So um, this can get a little difficult because it is pretty heavy. So you're just going to slowly dump onto your filter. Try not to pour it too fast. Give it time. It filters out really fast at first, and then it sometimes slows down because the filter does get a little clogged, and then it also cools a little bit, so the wax gets a little thicker, and uh, it, it does slow down, but it, it'll all go. And sometimes I help it with like a high tool and just kind of scrape it around a little bit on the um, top of the filter. Which I'm probably gonna do right now. So you could kind of just gently, you don't want to poke a hole in your filter, obviously. Uh, 
All right, so that's going to take some time to kind of filter out. You let it do its thing, and the finished product is going to look like this. This one actually came out pretty clean, but this is what you get because this is all going to float on top of the bucket, on top of all your water, and you just pop this disc out. So, and these are ones that I rendered down one more time. The wax is a little bit cleaner. Uh, it gets a little more pale because more of the yellow comes out. Just a little bit of a, another side note. If you keep rendering it and you keep doing this cycle and this process, the more you do it, the lighter your wax is going to get. However, you're also going to lose that very sweet beeswax smell. So if you're looking for hobby grade and you want that wax to be really light because you want to dye your candles for Christmas or, you know, you know, any of the holidays and you want to, you know, add some color to your candles, you're probably going to want to render it down even more to get as much of that color as possible. But again, you are sacrificing that smell and that beeswax property, so to speak. So you could also buy molds to store your wax. I plan on keeping my wax in this. I just made these last night. I bought a mold. Uh, it was 50 bucks and it, it does two of these. They're, the, the good molds are pretty expensive. They're silicone. If you guys want me to do a video on that, please let me know and I'll show you actually pouring the wax into candles um, or at least the molds. The candles I'm not good enough at yet where I'm comfortable showing people you know, how I do it because I'm still experimenting myself. So I don't think I'll do a candle video, but if you want to see how I heat up the wax and make the mold, you know, for the, the, the bricks of wax, you know, let me know. I'll, I'll do that. All right. I will come back when this all filters through and we'll show you what it all looks like. All right. So that all filtered out. It took about 10 minutes, I'd say. And I was periodically kind of scraping the bottom of the t-shirt with a hive tool to kind of help it along. You see all that chunky stuff that we refer to as thumb. So that's all the really heavy stuff. And that's why you, you have to do it this process several times. Just an update. This is what it's starting to look like. That hole in the center, like I suspected, would fill in. And it's all starting to harden. And this has been about, I'm going to say about a half hour. So you can see how long of a process this takes. Um, basically, it was enough time for me to render up, you know, another batch and get it into there. And I stopped doing that and I came over here and that's where we're at.